This is the RF 15 to 35 millimeter F2.8 LIS USM lens for Canon's RF mount. The question is, is it worth the hype? Is this really the best ultra wide lens Canon has ever made? And should you buy it and add it to your kit? Well, if that's what you're interested in, stick around because we're gonna review this lens in this video. I've had this lens in my kit for three years and I have a lot of experience with it. In my opinion, this piece of kit is about as close to perfect as it gets for a zoom lens. If you're thinking of investing in this lens, I strongly recommend it. But before you add this lens to your cart, let's take a closer look at the features, benefits, and drawbacks of this lens and figure out exactly who this lens is for. The RF 15 to 35 millimeter F2.8 LIS USM is Canon's flagship ultra wide zoom lens. It's one of Canon's L series lenses, so you can expect superior optics, weather sealing, and this lens is absolutely awesome in the rain. I have no problems getting this lens wet. As you can see here in this B-roll, it has great build quality and performance. This lens was released in 2019 for Canon's new RF mount camera. The body is made out of a decent hard plastic. The mount is metal and has a rubber gasket around the end for weather sealing, and the front filter thread is 82 millimeters. On the outside of the lens, you'll find an autofocus manual focus switch and an image stabilization on off switch. When image stabilization is turned on on the lens, it works in conjunction with the IBIS in the camera and they communicate with each other back and forth to give you ultra smooth footage, which is perfect for those of you who do run and gun filmmaking. This lens features three very well dampened and smooth rings. At the front, you'll find a programmable control ring. In the middle, you'll find the focus ring, which is electronically coupled to the focus motor. And lastly, you'll find a wide zoom ring closest to the camera. It only takes one quarter of a turn to get from 15 to 35 millimeter. And for those of us who shoot events and need to be quick with our gear, that is certainly appreciated. Now, when it comes to videography, there's a slight amount of focus breathing at 35 millimeter and a little bit more at 15 millimeter. All right, so the first drawback with this lens is the fact that it is externally focusing. So you can see here, as I zoom out to 15 millimeter, the lens protrudes from the lens barrel and there is a little gap here between the lens and the barrel and stuff could possibly get in there. Now, I don't know how this lens is designed, but I know I had an old EF 24 to 105 and sand got in there. And every time I zoomed, I could hear grinding, the plastic was grinding and it was just, it was awful. So. I don't know if this has some kind of mechanism to prevent that or not. It doesn't seem like it. But for me personally, I feel like this is a design flaw because if you're shooting in the desert and sand gets into your lens or you're shooting, let's say, downhill mountain biking and some mud gets in there, how are you going to get the mud out? You know what? I would rather just have the lens protrude a little bit more and have the peace of mind knowing that it is completely sealed off and nothing is going to get in there and cause any damage or inconvenience. So. If you're shooting in studio or weddings and things like that, I wouldn't worry. But if you're shooting more action adventure type stuff, I would worry. This lens weighs 840 grams, which isn't really that much. Compared to other ultra wide lenses, this lens is one of the biggest. However, with that said, it's not much bigger than the older EF 16 to 35 F 2.8 L Mark II, and not much heavier considering that the RF version has lens IS built into it. All right, let's take a look at autofocus. So here we're using the EOS R5 with the 15 to 35 millimeter and we're set to eye autofocus. So it's tracking my eye, no problem. The focus in photo mode is super snappy, quick and responsive in here. You can see it's tracking me. No issues if you're tracking birds or planes or cars or something like that. It works just as well. It's super fast, super sticky. And you can see here with glasses, it tracks me no problem with glasses. Every now and then it'll lose my eye and it'll track my head instead. But overall, very, very happy with how this lens autofocuses. So the autofocus with this lens in video mode can be just as responsive and fast as it is in photo mode, but you have to set that in the camera's menu. So by default, Canon has the autofocus in video mode set to a couple ticks below its fastest uh, setting. So if you wanna change that, you have to go into video mode first because video mode and photo mode have different options available in the menu. So go to video mode, go to your autofocus send settings, find the rack focus, and then you can change the speed of the rack focus of the lens to be super fast or super slow. So if you want a nice cinematic slow rack focus when you're like pulling focus between two points, you can set that. 
or if you want the lens to like quickly focus and track subjects, let's say if you're shooting sports, for example, and you want something just very impactful and quick and jarring, you can set the camera to do that as well. So autofocus is just as good in video mode as it is in photo mode, but you have more control over the autofocus speed. When it comes to distortion, yes, you get a little bit of pincushion and barrel distortion at either end of the lens at 16 and 35, but it's very minimal and I wouldn't even, it's not even something to worry about to be honest, because you can easily correct for that. And again, like Lightroom has lens correction profiles for the lens, so you can easily just adjust it there. All right, so now we're gonna do a very unscientific test. Here we have the 15 to 35. It's the biggest, most expensive ultra wide lens in Canon's lineup. And this is the 16 millimeter F2.8 STM. And this is the smallest and cheapest, I'd say not cheapest, but least expensive ultra wide lens in Canon's lineup. So I wanna see what the distortion looks like in the background. So we're gonna pop this one on first, and then we're gonna pop this one on and we'll take a look at the distortion and see if there's a difference. Okay, so first up we have the 1535 at 15 millimeter, one millimeter wider than the other one, but still ultra wide. So I'm gonna stand here close to the edge and what does the distortion look like on my face? Is it really stretching my face? How are the lines in the background? Does it look okay? How decent is it? Okay, just make a mental picture of this and now we're gonna pop on the 16 millimeter STM lens. All right, so now we have the 16 millimeter STM, one millimeter not as wide, but if I stand here on the side like this, does it distort my face? Does it mess up my face? Does it pull it? Does it stretch it compared to the other lens? Does it look a lot different? The lines in the background, it looks like there's a little more bowing here. Doesn't look straight, but I don't know. I'm gonna have to compare the images uh, on the computer. But this is it, this is the 16 millimeter versus the 15 to 35 millimeter. Can you see a difference? Right off the bat, I don't see much of a difference, but uh, if you guys wanna see a full review video comparing these two lenses, then uh, let me know in the comments down below. Now let's look at image quality. I've shot these with the EOS R5 and these are raw images right out of the camera, converted in Capture One, and all sliders are set to zero. Now let's look at center sharpness starting at f2.8. Wide open, the center sharpness and contrast is great. It stays the same all the way up until f11 when sharpness and contrast start to dip due to diffraction. At f18, the image starts to become visibly soft. Starting off at 15 millimeter wide open at 2.8, you can see there is some vignette happening in the corners. Looking at sharpness and contrast, the corners are a little bit soft wide open, which is normal for ultra wide zoom lenses. Contrast is decent taking into account the vignette. The corners start to look better as you close down the aperture and the light straightens up. At f5, the vignette clears up and the edge sharpness and contrast is improved. The best image quality kicks in at f8. Then at f11, the diffraction starts to soften the entire image. By f22, it's pretty soft. All right, so now let's look at center sharpness at 24 millimeter, which is about halfway through this lens's zoom range. Wide open at f2.8, this lens shows good sharpness and really good contrast. Stop it down to f3.2 and both sharpness and contrast become really good. Sharpness and contrast remain really good all the way up until f13 where diffraction starts to set in and you can see a little bit of softness starting to creep into the lens. At 24 millimeter f2.8, there's a little bit of vignette in the corners but not as dark as it was at 15 millimeter. Contrast is okay, but the image is a little bit soft. Again, stop it down to f3.2 and you'll see a big improvement. At f5, the vignette clears up. And at f8, you'll see the best corner performance. Again, at f13, diffraction kicks in and image quality starts to drop off. Now let's check out the lens's center performance at its maximum zoom of 35 millimeter. Right out of the gate at f2.8, center sharpness and contrast is amazing. I mean, this is an ultra wide zoom lens and traditionally, you sacrifice quality for versatility, but with this lens, you get the quality and the versatility. So thumbs up to Canon. They did an absolutely fantastic job with the zoom lens. At 35 millimeter, this lens stays sharp in the center all the way up until F14 when diffraction sets in and the image starts to soften up. Wide open at F2.8, there seems to be a very slight vignette, but nothing that can't be corrected in post. Contrast is really good and edge sharpness is just a touch below that, so it's just okay. Vignette starts to clear up and edges get sharper as you stop down the aperture. And again, the best edge performance is seen at F8. Diffraction kicks in at F13 and the images start to get soft from there. One thing I didn't mention in this test is purple fringing because have you seen any? There's so little purple fringing that it's barely noticeable. And that's a big thumbs up to Canon again. The coatings on this lens, absolutely awesome.
I'm pretty sure nobody has ever bought an ultra wide angle lens because of its ability to get bokeh, right? But check this out, with a minimum focus distance of 0.28 meters from the sensor, you can actually get some pretty good subject separation with this lens. Okay, let's be honest, you'd never actually shoot a close up portrait of somebody from 0.28 meters away. I mean, that would just be crazy. But for product photos or product video reviews, this lens is awesome. It really helps show off what you're talking about by creating subject separation from the background. For that reason, this lens has been an invaluable piece of kit for my YouTube channel. I pretty much use it on all my videos these days. All right, so let's talk about who this lens is for. Who should buy the 15 to 35? Personally, I feel like everybody needs an ultra wide lens in their camera bag. If it's the 16 millimeter or 15 to 35 or one of the other options out there, I think an ultra wide always comes in handy. But who is it specifically for? I think number one, event photography. The 15 to 35 is awesome for shooting events. I used to shoot with the 16 to 35 all the time. This was my go-to lens before I upgraded to the 15 to 35. And if you're shooting a wedding, for example, and you're in a limo or a car or you're in a tight space, because not every wedding is gonna be like very spacious. Sometimes you're in the bride's house and it's very cramped. You're in the room, you have to get the dress. So a nice ultra wide with corrective optics allows you to get the shot and you can get nice and close and you don't need a lot of space. So huge advantage for that kind of thing. F2.8 really helps if you're shooting at like uh, the wedding hall or the church ceremony or something like that and it's darker. The F2.8 definitely works. If you shoot concerts, that kind of thing, corporate events and dark kind of auditoriums, definitely comes in handy. Another type of photographer that would really benefit from a 15 to 35 is anyone who shoots real estate or architectural photography. I think it's a brilliant lens for that kind of thing. I've shot a ton of uh, architecture with a 16 to 35, which is pretty much the same thing, except it doesn't have IS and one millimeter difference. But anyway, the corrective optics allow you to shoot spaces and it allows you to keep the lines vertical and horizontal. So there isn't this weird like GoPro look where everything's distorted. Uh, another nice thing about the 15 to 35 is that you get the 35 millimeter focal length. So if I step back a little bit, so you can shoot a portrait head and shoulders of somebody, right? Which is really cool. And you can stand a little further back and you can take an environmental portrait. Or if you zoom out the 15 mil, you can get like a portrait of somebody in their environment. So a shoemaker in their shop, an architect in front of the building that they created, you know, uh, a camper in the forest, right? So rather than having a tight shot all the time, you can get a nice environmental portrait. So I know it's a bit of a stretch, but I really feel like the 15 to 35 is a great portrait lens for that kind of thing. Another photographer that would absolutely benefit from a nice ultra wide like this is car photographers. If you want to get in there and get a shot of the dashboard, because you don't have a lot of space, right? You're sitting at the front seat, you're getting the steering wheel on the dashboard, the control panel. So you have to get wide. So this would be a perfect lens for that. Or if you want to shoot the car's exterior from the outside, I mean, I don't have a car, but you can see how this kind of like pulls. See at 35 millimeter, this looks like a pretty regular shaped camera, right? There's no distortion, but if we get out to 15 millimeter and I bring this closer to the camera, you can see how it distorts and elongates the shape of this camera. And the same thing happens with cars. Like if you get nice and close and low to the car, it just makes it look long and dramatic and big. And it just, it's a cool angle for, uh, or a cool perspective for shooting cars. So car photographers definitely would benefit with a lens like this. And another photographer that would love this lens is a landscape photographer, especially if you want your trees to look vertical instead of bowed. You know, the same, the same ideas apply to landscape photography as they do to architectural photography. You get a nice wide spacious shot with corrective optics so everything looks lined up the way it should be. So now let's look at this lens for video. Now, when you make creative videos or you make movies or, or that kind of thing, the first shot you want is an establishing shot. So a nice ultra wide is great. So if you want to see this is the house where the crazy things are going to happen or you know, whatever, you know, this is the city or this is the car, you can get a nice dramatic wide angle shot, which is your establishing shot. And then you zoom into your, your head and shoulder shots, the, you know, the dialogue happening back and forth. So if you're an amateur filmmaker, I think this is a very good lens for that kind of thing because it's super versatile. You can get the establishing shots, you can get the close-ups of the head and that kind of thing. So, you know, I would say it's good for people like that. And the other person this lens is really good for is people like me. If you're a solo content creator, this lens is absolutely awesome. About 90% of my YouTube videos are filmed on this lens and I absolutely love it. And the one advantage is as you're, you're a solo creator, right? So you're always 
changing settings on your camera. So I can film myself here and I look okay. The distortion correction doesn't stretch or pull my face in any way, but I can still like, I can easily reach my camera, reach the record button. So if you have a little setup and you're filming yourself, record, stop recording. Oh, let's change the aperture. Let's change the shutter speed. As opposed to like shooting with a longer focal length lens. And you have to be like, oh, well, I have to restart this or I have to change the setting. I have to walk to the camera, walk back. So, I mean, it's really cool. Plus it has lens IS. So it's pretty good for vlogging. Canon used to like, there used to be jello-y effects in the corners, but I think firmware 160 corrected that. It's not perfect by any means. You still get a little kind of warpiness, but it's not as bad as it used to be. So if you're a vlogger, again, excellent lens. At arm's length, here we go. I'm holding it like this. So you get ultra wide at 15, you can zoom in a little bit more. And yeah, it's not too heavy. And it's a decent vlogging lens. All right, and that's my review of the RF 15 to 35. Hopefully you enjoyed that. If you did, leave a comment down below, subscribe to the channel. I got a lot more RF lenses to review as well. So thank you for watching, appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next video. Okay, fade out. <laughs> All right, see ya.